So I've come down into the Nethan Gorge near Crossford. I've been following a little badger track which you can see up there. It's very steep down here so I'm having to be a bit careful. Um, but there are some large sandstone crags down here with some very interesting features in here where I've put my hammer so this bed within the sandstone contains these rather strange circular features with this dark rim infilled with something that looks pretty similar to the sandstone around it and I was a bit confused as to what they were you can see a bigger one there and then you find this one here see this one you can see where a piece of it has fallen away from the sandstone around it and you can see that pattern on the underside of the sandstone that pattern is part of a bark pattern um, probably associated with some branches of uh, what a plant that was like a tree, a lycopod, um, which is a carboniferous um, forest, part of a carboniferous forest. So you can actually see the imprint of the bark there preserved in the sandstone. And you can see more of these branches. Probably would have been washed down in a river in a flood um, and carried with a lot of sand in the river and then deposited um, within the sand and as they were buried um, they've become preserved and lithified so the wood inside has become replaced um, by material that's very similar to the sand around it and the rim the bark has actually formed this kind of dark it's weathering dark, um, this rim around the edge. So I've come a little bit further down the badger track from where we saw the um, imprints of the um, wood fragments and we still have this sandstone forming a big crag feature along the gorge. Um, but here we can see what's underneath it we've got a really shaly soft mudstone and which is eroding out preferentially forming a slight under undercut under the sandstone crag so what have we got of very thin shaly fragments of greyish mudstone and these would have formed in a more kind of quiet water setting possibly some kind of overbank flood um, and then formed in a floodplain and then been covered by an erosive channel body Oh, along a bit further in the sandstone and we can see more of these lycopod branches sticking out you can see a piece there uh, with the bark imprint in the sandstone behind it if we just pan down we've got this amazing piece squashed slightly so it's slightly kind of elongate but you can see the bark patterning and see how it kind of goes in to the rock face and out again so we've kind of got a slightly bent uh, branch but so this is a branch of a of a lycopod so almost a little bit like some kind of conifer tree um, and so you're looking at a bit of a tree branch that's maybe 300 350 million years old more nice sandstone features this one might be a bit difficult to get on camera um, because we have 
a high exposure of some massive sandstones all the way up there it's got the sun on it nicely which is picking out some of the internal bedding so you see all those little laminations in there which are structures formed by waves, sediment waves and ripples um, within deposits in a riverbed and you can see in places they cross cut each other so it's another example of some cross bedding and you can see that there's slightly different textures to the surface so some of it's finer grained and that section in the middle there is a bit coarser, a bit rougher in texture and that's cutting off some of the structures below it so we've got these laminations being truncated by the base of that slightly coarser material so what we've got coming through there is a thin small channel unit which is carrying some coarser uh, grained sand it's a very fine gravel um, in a channel, uh, channel line and so this is part of a braided stream system so where you had a wide uh, wide area of stream we've got sandy bars and you've got slightly gravelly channels being deposited in between these sandier bars and as we go upwards you can see another unit of some slightly coarser sand with these really strong bedding structures in it so the migrating gravel and sand bar within the channel system and all just stacking on top of each other eventually becoming buried and lithified to form this hard massive sandstone and just come up the bank a little way to the top of this sandstone and up here you can see this really kind of rubbly looking horizon at the top of it which is overlain by another sandstone unit it's a bit difficult to see in the light but you can see all these knobbly bits and some little vertical lines coming down through some parts this is likely to be a rooty horizon and this white colouring it has reflects that it was probably some kind of soil layer so we're getting minerals being deposited weathering of the rocks at the surface or the sediments at the surface and we're getting some growth of of plants possibly some burrowing um, you can see a little bit if I can zoom in it's not going to focus uh, on this basal bit here you can see all those uh, nodular bits and holes um, which are indicative of, of some of these roots where the materials weathered out of them that was formerly in there so we've got a big deposit of sandstone and then we've had the development of a soil layer, a surface layer with some vegetation another great exposure of this massive sandstone unit as we pan down to the bottom here we get back into this kind of flood deposit with um, these circular forms which are like fragments of, of branches and wood that have been fossilised within, within this flood flow and if we pan along it's a bit difficult with the changing light but we can see some kind of almost slabs of coaly material and these might have been bigger um, bigger trunks, bigger sections of wood that were being carried along in the flow it's really dark fragmented organic material well, 
Well, this outcrop just gets better and better. Following the sandstone along, we now start coming into what's below, where we have this mudstone, shaly, dark grey mudstone forming this sharp break at the base of the sandstone. You can focus in on this sandstone a little bit and we can see some really nice cross bedding on that face. It's a little bit discoloured by some fluid, fluid flow along the joint there. But we've got some lovely cross bedding. But we can have a closer look at some of this mudstone underneath. It's just very fine grained sediment. Thinly bedded, thinly laminated. But as you get down into it, there's something interesting further down. So we have this dark, very black looking layer. And if we break a piece of it off, you can see that shiny, shiny black surface of a coal layer. So we have a sandstone with mudstone below it, and the mudstone contains some layers of coal. And I think we can carefully scramble down. What we might find, we'll do it carefully because some of this has collapsed, is look at this cavern, which looks like an old working. I'm definitely not going in there. It looks like someone's worked in into the back face and possibly looking for the coal that's below this sandstone but we can carry on round gingerly and see This mudstone carries on below the sandstone. Can't quite see the coaly layer. The coaly layer is down here. So this layer contains some stringers, stringers of coal, and then we pan back down. We can see that there's this layer of mudstone with the coals in it and then we actually get into another bluff of sandstone below and just just about see that below that sandstone below us there's another mudstone horizon so we have a sequence of these interbedded thick channel sandstones um, underlain by mudstones so we had a sequence where we had these channels coming through and then in between the channel sandstones being deposited we've got more slack water environments where we're getting finer grain sediments, we're getting plant growth, vegetation growth and then we're getting these big floods that come through carving channels, carrying lots of sediment and vegetation uh, and depositing that within the channels and then continued deposition of lots of sandstone above, so huge on these big channel sandstone deposits that are currently over the top. In fact, if we look a little bit more closely up here, see at the top of this sandstone bed, we've got some kind of whitish, marly looking sediment. It's possible we've got some soil layers in there and another slightly shaly band underneath this other massive sandstone that's forming the overhang. So I've just come down a bit further, pretty carefully because it's a bit uh, steep down here. But come down through this mudstone, there's another important horizon, uh, which is we can see in the in the mudstones here. It might not look like much. 
got these kind of nodules, nodular, um, these are ironstone nodules, which are formed within the mudstones. Let's see, there's one a little bit closer just here. So these ironstone nodules are also an important resource in the history of the area. Um, as there was also, not only was there coal mining, there was also in some places mining for ironstone. You can see how it has that kind of red colour, which is the oxidation of some of the deposits, possibly hematite. And we can see, you can see that red colour in this fragment, which is broken off. Also, some stringers of coal in there, too. It's iron staining. So, I have to be a little bit careful here, I'm standing a bit close to the edge. But this is that second sandstone unit that's below. And now we can start to see that even below that, there's more mudstone, that dark stuff that's down through the trees. So perhaps I can get down there and have a look. Really. So we've come down below the sandstone outcrop that we could see below us from above. And so here we are at the level of this slightly thinner sandstone unit. And you can see in this one, whereas the top one was very massive, this one's got some joints in it. You can see all these surfaces coming f towards us and away from us. So, so this surface and this surface are two what we call conduit joints, joints that are uh, at some consistent angle. Um, and these are characteristic of fairly resistant rocks like sandstones, which these are. And you can see that they've got a moderately regular spacing. Um, you can see the breaks in the rock. And we can see that below this sandstone, we've also got a very muddy horizon. So we've got another channel sandstone coming through, through our river environment. If we carry on a bit further along, see we can still see the material below. See how knobbly all of this is. Pretty rooty, rooty horizon. Possibly some kind of soil layer in the mud um, forming these very gnarled looking root systems. Can you see that? In there. 